So I think, yes, we have to think about a strategy. How to make people aware on all levels of a business, why it's important, and you know, what do you gain from it? Because we all want to know what we gain from something. And as it doesn't cost that much if you do it from day one. I stand by that. I stand by that. I mean, I'm old school. I, you know, we started doing HTML <laughs> way back. So, and I love doing HTML from scratch, no React for me and stuff. But that's hard. I mean, I don't use React. So some people say, yes, you can do React fully accessible. But even so, it's still just code. It's not all experience. Yeah. I mean, stuff like text based communicating is not cool. As an aside, I think that React and similar frameworks are ruining people's ability to code in a way because they're too abstracted from the basic structure of the web. Oh man, you don't know. <laughs> I, I get you, I get you, yes. I mean, the whole CSS and GS discussion is like blowing out of proportion. But I do believe if you are going to code a website, you have to learn HTML and CSS from scratch. Yeah. especially CSS. And when people tell me CSS is hard, I have a hard time believing them because sometimes I think it's too easy, but, but I do understand, you know, if you're used to starting your, with a framework and then yeah. try go to the root language, you're going to have trouble with that. Yeah. And I mean, CSS, is, I mean, I saw Eric Meyer's latest book on CSS, like thousand pages or so. I don't know everything that's in that book. I mean, every day I'm still looking up stuff. I cannot remember all that. And right, right. even CSS is like getting so big that soon you have to split it off because you got the whole part of animation that's oh. pretty complicated. I mean, I have seen some code pens with what they can do with CSS only and wow, my mind is blown. But in my daily job, I'm not making animations. I'm making you a website that need to have a good layout that works everywhere. Right, right. So flex buttons, yes, Grant? Yes, I'm learning that and using that. Once I did, okay, let me look at React. When people talk about React, let me look at that code. I just got a bad feeling from it because it's just not plain HTML or looking at anymore. So I'm thinking it's going to react still going to be just big in five, six years. That's what I'm wondering because it's just a framework. Vanilla JavaScript, good thing. Yes, vanilla JavaScript, good thing. But React is still just a framework. Mm -hmm. And even worse, one that came out of Facebook, right? Phrase framework, in my experience, since I started coding um, website frameworks have come and gone. I mean, but HTML is still here. Right. And CSS is still here. And JavaScript is still here. To put all your apps in the back video of React right. or Angular right. or I don't know what. The purpose of web standards was to not pull our bags in one basket. I mean, choose your tools correctly. Hmm. Yeah. Don't just throw tools at everything. Well, that's one of my pet peeves is people's obsession with tools versus a focus on what exactly is the outcome we're trying to achieve. Right. Yeah. It's all about tools and, you know, people get into fights on Twitter about which tool is better and I stay out of it. I mean, I'm sure React may have its, yeah, its purpose. Hmm. I can imagine there are cases when it's correct, you should use React or Angular, sure. But when I see people setting up a simple website and gonna use React for it, and like, why? Yeah, it's hard. I, I don't know, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, what's gonna, but I'm really wondering well, where we will be in five years. I'm really wondering about that. And so I have a question. What do you want to accomplish or help shift in the next five years? Well, obviously the personal goal for me is create more awareness and you know, I'd like to see that especially hospitals are more accessible for everyone. I mean, we are, you are stressed going to the hospital, then we have to deal with things not being possible because this is the way we do things. So I think for me, it's just more awareness that not everyone has two feet, two legs, hearing and disability. I want more awareness of that. And yeah, just, just that. And that I can just order food.
because I can put in that box Text that me. I'm deaf, you know? <laughs> right, text me. And, but farther than that, I know someone that really focuses into the future and I'm very much a person of right now. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we all hope things are better over five years, but not that I'm going to focus too much hmm. because how, many, how much control do we actually have over what will happen in five years, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I'm just one person, you know, in tiny Dutch country, but I do, I write blogs, you know, I keep writing my blog, letting my voice hear. I think just being outspoken about what we believe in mm. and just don't lose patience. I sometimes feel I'm losing patience. I don't know about you, but sometimes it's like up here that, like I said, and even though you explain to people and so it's, it takes a lot of energy. And a lot of, okay, let's do it just again, deep breath and keep going mm. and explain to people. Right. And I like writing, but the hard thing is, um, while I'm good at writing that stuff, I'm very bad at coming with the idea of what should I write about, right? Because it's that bubble thing, right? And in my own way, I have a hard time thinking about what other people, how do I say just, um, like when I explain people about that website with ordering food and that box, many people are like, oh, why? Wow, right, I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. So I have a hard time putting myself in other people's shoes while they don't know this that is missing. Right. Because I have been there for like, it's now 10, 11 years. So I don't really think actively about something that's not working because I have to learn to adjust myself to just hearing work, to just work that's built for hearing people only. Right. Do you understand this? So I'm adjusting myself and I have difficulty with turning myself around. And like, you know, I don't think people really realize that just is not working. Get better at getting just things to write about what is hard. Like I wrote about a train. I don't know how the train system is in the United States. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> Okay, well, we have better train system than in the U.S. in the sense that this country is very much focused on public transportation. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can get yeah. everywhere with public transportation. That's not a problem. But the problem is, for example, that, how do you call that man that, uh, I forgot the word in English, that's when you speak to my language, uh, the conductor, right? So here the conductors, blows on the whistle when the doors are going to close. And so when he blows on the whistle, you should not get any more on the train because you can get stuck between the closing door. And if you try and you send a bad mood and you see, you can get fined for 100 dollars, right? When I leave work, I'm at Rotterdam Central and the train platforms are below. And I get out of the subway and go upstairs and then I have to go downstairs to catch the train. And I know the train will be leaving in one or two minutes. So mm -hmm. I stop jogging to get my train. But if I'm driving too slow, I'm not looking at my watch. I'm just thinking I'm going to make that train. So I get on the platform and I see the doors are open. And so I just go for it. But once it happened that the door will just start closing, I almost got my back back. Because oh. I don't hear right. the conductor right. whistling, right? So I wrote an idea why those doors have a flashing light, you know? So that just doors are closed. So you can see it's closing. Right. Oh, when you're sitting in the train, and that's one thing we do still struggle with our delays. Oh, God. So then I'm sitting in the train, and there's a delay. And every train carriage has a screen, and they usually show we are here right now, we're stopping right here right now. Mm -hmm. But if there is a delay or something happened, you don't read on the screen what happened. Right. So the conductor will just, you know. Right, right. Like, Traveler, you're stuck here because, you know, a car decided to cross right now, so we have to wait, right. for example. But it's not on the display, so I'm just sitting right there like, you know, what's happening. And the train also has an app on your phone, so, you know, you can check live mm -hmm. updates. But still not to help you if you are sitting in one train stuck in the middle of somewhere and it's not right. moving. Right. And when you're at the train station, it's big, there are thousands of people going and... Just constantly calling, oh yeah, we switch, we switch. How to say that? We switch platforms, so we are not, you know, your train to Rotterdam is not leaving for platform one, it's leaving from them. Right. So, yeah. 
So that's what I mean, adjusting myself to the hearing walls. So you know what I do? I just see where everyone is going and I start walking behind. Right. Yeah. Well, look over where these people are going. <laughs> I mean, if the people are waiting yeah. next to me to get there, if I see them all walking somewhere, I just follow along. <laughs> So yeah, just just examples of how I have to adjust myself to a hearing world. Sometimes I wonder, yeah, you know, oh. do I keep writing the same thing over and over again in different? Uh, right. Short answer, yes, because it will be the first time a lot lot of people will learn it, and for the rest. The repetition will allow them to understand the importance of it. Right, right, right. You just keep going at it. Yeah. Right. That's a lot to think about. Huh? Well, it's back to the patience and the empathy which is weird to say about people who are essentially entirely able. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Empathy for the able body of people. <laughs> yeah. I have something in my mind, yeah. but I better not say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you can say it, you can say it. Go on, come on. I mean, it's just understanding for stupidity but sometimes ignorance right uh, it doesn't happen to me but many deaf people say when they tell you know the stewardess or the waiter of the restaurant you know i'm deaf and oh yeah i'm gonna get a brain menu for you so what must one think then is the stupidity is it ignorance is it like uh, it's hard to say yeah let's leave it ignorance and there's also the thing that able body people feel like they know better. Like when I'm out with people, I'd rather not have them speak for me. You know what I mean? Right, so right. if I'm going yeah. to order food, just let me deal with ordering my food. And yeah. if I ask you for help, you may help me. Right. But don't do it for me. And it's the same thing. A lot of people who are in wheelchair and they can just push them along and then somebody will come, you know? So oh, yeah. No, like, no, like, no, 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 you don't do that. Oh, maybe people are parking in the handicapped spot and, you know, they just open the door and they walk away. And then people will get mad. You are walking. Why are you just handcuffed? But maybe that right. person is only able to walk a short distance. Right. Oh, when people who are blind and you know, uh, they're walking with, how do you call it in English? Uh, the leading stick? Um, yeah, cane. The also. cane, right. Yeah. And they have the, the iPhone with them because the iPhone is an excellent gadget for people who are blind. I mean, I met a blind guy once and he had um, his iPhone with him. Mm -hmm. So he heard my translator typing and so we explained to him that right and so and no time siri had for him all the information wow so and they are very 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 good at using the iphone and what happens if that people see someone who's walking with a cane and using an iphone and they're going to be like but you cannot really be blind you're using a phone right so yes that ignore us i mean just trust people with a disability to know what they need and that they are disabled. Right. But it's very hard to not really <laughs> go to that stupid right. offensive direction. Yep. I, I guess it all comes down to what our motivations are. Do we want to burn? someone for their stupidity or do we want to move them to a better place when is more fun <laughs> is more work right you know uh, 
I'm not in the habit of burning people, you know. And sometimes you will need to let all that rage, but you'll do that if people you trust. I'm not going to do that on Twitter. Right. Right. I, I often don't feel comfortable when I see other people who say that, you know, really burn someone. But sometimes I do understand. Sometimes I do understand because it can hurt one deeply, you know. Yes. So due to the new accessibility and inclusive law in the Netherlands, uh, the blind dogs, the blind leading dogs, should be allowed everywhere. And this person went to a restaurant here in my town with her dog, and the owner refused her service. So he didn't want a dog in the place. And that person was so mad, and they went on Twitter and said, you know, this place, and I understand that it's very, very offensive and deeply hurting. Yeah. And you feel very much powerless when something like that happens to you. So I can understand why someone will go on Twitter and, you know, let it all out. It's hurtful to be told you don't. Right, right. It's, it's Yes, I think a black people, I don't know if they understand how hurtful that can be. But maybe that person doesn't think too much about refusing someone, but it hurts a lot. Even small things, uh, I forgot, I had, uh, had an example just recently, but I completely forgot about it right now. Uh, that happened to me, but I can't remember it right now. Sometimes you just block that thing off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But for me, one hurtful example for me, I have a very good example from here. Um, at the Dutch movies, at the cinemas. Mm. So mostly Hollywood movies, cartoons, Disney, everything. And it's with Dutch subtitles, right? But um, like children's movie, cartoons, Pixar and Disney, they are dubbed to Dutch. Mm -hmm. So they don't have subtitles. Right. Uh, I have a four-year-old now who loves going to the movie. But I can never take him because taking him means that I will be paying 12 euros and sit for a half, an hour and a half in a movie and not being able to right. follow. And uh, there's also Dutch movies, you know, several Dutch movies, but none of them are captioned. None of them have subtitles. So if there is a new Dutch movie, I cannot see it because it's not accessible to deaf people. And I find it hurtful because I have just nephew. I want to spend time with him. And he loves going to the movie. I love going to the movie too. I love Pixar movies. But I cannot go with him because it's not accessible to me. Right. So that kind of thing hurts me. And that's why I very seldom go to the movies. I mean, Captain Marvel is at the movie now. I think I'm going to see that one. But in the rule, I, I never go to the cinemas, no. Because of that. Right. And um, yes. Yeah. And I want to go back to you because I saw you put something about yourself. Oh yeah. You struggle with anxiety. Yes, it was the feeling of not belonging that I experience. I get it. I get it. It's a small thing, but it does impact how I experience the world. I also suffer from anxiety. But in hard work, you know, you learn to control it. I think it's also a broad beginning to boost to say it because a lot of people do not like talking about their own disabilities. Like a lot of, a lot of people come out and say, you know, I suffer from anxiety or I suffer from depression or, you know, and it started to get better on that. But mostly, you know, um, I experience that a lot. Once they ask me to do a talk about, you know, yes, you're deaf and you're chronic ear and look, you have a job. And so I submitted my proposal of how to do the talk. It was very neutral. It wasn't the positivity party, but it wasn't neither a negative down party. It was just neutral. And they kind of suggested, it was, I don't know, it was weird. Like, maybe you don't know what you want to talk about it, they told me. But I actually wrote down what I want to talk about. This mm -hmm. is my message. So then I went to talk with someone else who's chronic ear, and she told me just what they want inspiration for. So you can talk about the deafness, but it must be inspirational. You overcame, you know? Right. But life is not like that. I'm sure I have a job. I'm sure I live a, a good life, but it doesn't mean it's easy. Right. 
I mean, even if you are able to have some shit days. So, add to it that you are disabled. I mean, some days are just not gonna be fun. Right. Right. And somehow they do. A lot of people don't want to hear that. So, if you want to talk about your anxiety, I mean, they are to hear from how well you're doing in spite of it, then instead of the bad days. Right. So we need to let go of that. Everything is happy. Everything needs to be positive and, you know, and hustling and balling. <laughs> because life's not like that. I've started responding to how is it going with good. <laughs> it isn't. It's very much like that here. I read to someone else Instagram. She also lives in the Netherlands and we saw stuff answering good. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. Because it's a cultural thing. I think it's everywhere. When people ask you how you're doing, they're, they're not expecting you to actually answer how you are doing, right? Yes. Yes. It's just a lie. Please tell me only me good. And, and if you say, well, you know, and we, whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah. I think, I think, of course, there is a level. I mean, you shouldn't like yeah. throw it all out. I understand yeah. there's a modicum of things, but it should be allowed to tell someone, you know what? I'm not having such a good day today. Because it can, it can be a burden to others in a way. Right, right. I yeah. mean, that's why we have family for We <laughs> 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 burden them. <laughs> Yeah, they have to. But look. I mean, if it's a friend or you know someone you see yeah. often and they ask you how you're doing, it should be acceptable and normal to tell that person, you know, not so mm. good today. Because I often feel that when I'm not having a very good day and people ask me how I'm doing, I tell them good. And then I have to keep that appearance all the while talking to them. <laughs> so it's just a burden on ourselves then. <laughs> oh, no. Now I have to be in a good mood for this meeting. I know, um, you yeah. know, at work I somehow let go of pretense. If I'm not really in the mood, they know. I'll be very quiet. I'll barely open my mouth if I'm not in the good mood. So I just do my job, you know, and I'll go home. Thanks for watching my interview with Doris de Cuba. I hope you enjoyed it. We talked about a lot of different things, but they were all related and I thought pretty important to talk about. This brings us to the end of season one of We Can Do Better. I hope you enjoyed the season. We'll be back after a couple of weeks with season two and another 10 episode run. Until then, do what this says.